I've got uh, 24 slides to get through here in about 20-25 minutes, so I'll be moving at a fairly good pace. Um, this uh, uh, main slide that you're looking at now, uh, you'll see that I'm going to focus on IP paging for this application. There's a, a little bit at the end regarding the ALGO intercoms, I'll just touch on those briefly. But I'd like to focus on IP paging uh, to talk about uh, why customers choose IP paging and what how some of the applications are, are put together. All of the devices you see on this home slide uh, are SIP endpoints, so they're PoE devices. In almost every case, these connect uh, to the network, so it could be a hosted uh, UC environment, it could be a premise UC environment. Uh, they're capable of SIP registration, but many of them are also operating for a lot of applications, uh, just in an IP mode for, for multicast. So you can see there's speakers, there's strobe lights, there's door intercoms, there's customer assistance devices, and there's other hardware as well that's not shown on this screen. This first slide, this is uh, typical of a high voltage distribution paging system that we would see here in North America. I, I imagine it's much the same in New Zealand. In this environment, I'm, I'm using uh, a particular brand of phones to represent the UC environment uh, tied into a cloud, but this could be premise or it could be hosted again. Uh, in this scenario, we have a, an ATA sort of between those two phones, which is interfacing to the network. And then behind that, we have a telephone answering module, and then that goes to a zone control module on the far left, and then into an amplifier, and eventually out to a speaker. Uh, this is typically this, the type of equipment that you'd see installed in a traditional paging system, a legacy system, and very difficult here to tie in that, that speaker at the bottom that I show uh, emanating some sound, very difficult to create a page zone that would include some of the phones as well as some of those speakers. I would like to compare this to what an IP paging solution would look like uh, just for the impact and that all of that complicated equipment, all of that wiring goes away and you can simply install one IP speaker so there's no common equipment, it's very scalable. Uh, there's no ATA, there's no telephone answering module and it could be, in this application, it could be one speaker or it could be many speakers. Also very flexible in the zoning, it doesn't really matter uh, where the speakers are or how you want to zone them, that can be decided later or changed at, at any time. So one of the nice things about IP paging, if you're using IP speakers particularly, is it is uh, scalable and linear from, from one speaker to many thousands. On the definition of IP paging, uh, there, there's really more than one form factor. And in, in the middle here, you can see a cloud with IP speakers. So that would be what I would typically call a pure IP paging application. But also very common on the left side, we have IP enabled paging and this typically is uh, a scenario where a customer has legacy paging equipment and the UC environment has changed to something that's IP, whether again hosted or cloud or hosted or premise. And you can keep that legacy infrastructure if it's working well in place and interface it into the UC environment with the ALGO 8301. So we've IP enabled existing infrastructure. And on the far right, you see what I call a, a, an IP hybrid solution, and this is really a combination of the both. It's very common to see a customer IP enable their legacy infrastructure, but when they're adding to the paging system, is typically done with IP speakers. So we can support all of these environments and mix and match. You can have a combination of existing infrastructure as well as new technology. I don't know if this slide means anything uh, to the people listening this morning, but uh, Nortel Networks had made a phone system called Northstar. Uh, BCM followed that, probably one of the most popular phone systems in the world at the time. I still have one in my home. Uh, there's a lot of them out there. And the way that worked for paging was you had a dry page port, a dry audio, meaning no DC on the wire pair, and a dry contact to either mute the music or activate the amplifier. Uh, because there's so many of these out here, they're, of course, they've been replaced now for a long time and they're still being replaced. Uh, but the question comes up, what to do when that old phone system is removed and you have a new UC environment? How are you going to connect that existing infrastructure uh, to the cloud? So uh, what we see often done is an ATA is provided. 
that will then interface to the amplifier, but in this case that amplifier won't play nice with an ATA because it doesn't have the ability to answer ring, so it does not accept an ATA or an FXS port or a station port as we would call it. You could put, install there an ATA and a telephone answering module, um, but that's a fair amount of equipment and you, as you'll see in a few slides from now, uh, you also lose some audio quality and have some other issues. So this is where the ALGO 8301 uh, was really intended for. This is the application it was specifically designed for. On the left side we have a PoE IP interface, whether that be SIP or multicast, to the network. Uh, so very friendly from the network side is uh, administered through a web interface. And on the right side we emulate the drive page port that you would have had from this old style uh, phone system. And you get uh, a lot of features with this device which I'll begin explaining in a few moments. Uh, this slide I, I like to show, this is actually based on, on a real case that came up with a customer um, a couple of weeks ago. What you see on the top there, there's three clouds. If you follow that top cloud, uh, there was a, a solution provided by uh, a paging provider uh, for this customer that included coming out of the network. In this, in this case, it was hosted, so cloud-based. There was an ATA and a telephone answering module. There was a feedback eliminator, which was basically store and release to eliminate feedback. A scheduled announcement server, an input mixer to tie it all together. Then there was some kind of a zone control module. And then finally, you got to the amplifier. And what this decided to do in this case was they replaced all of those things that you see on that top line with the ALGO 8301. All of those features that you see there in those boxes are included in the 8301. So a very powerful interface much simpler in terms of for this customer and they actually had nine or ten amplifiers so we put one of these units in front of each one to tie them together. It was uh, less expensive and had uh, more capability. And at the bottom uh, of course had they gone pure IP and uh, then it would have been simpler yet and in this particular case this customer actually did decide to use IP ceiling speakers as part of their solution. So I just wanted to show how IP enabling an existing amplifier can actually simplify uh, things at the front end. Some of the key features for the 8301 uh, is it supports SIP, it supports IP multicast, uh, Polycom group page among others. Uh, when we say SIP it can actually be registered with up to 50 SIP extensions and if we had time I could explain why that is and how that's used for zoning. This device was designed specifically for paging, so you have a balanced and isolated line output with XLR and terminal block connectors for twisted pair. You also have line level compensation, automatic gain, uh, so you get very consistent audio levels out, uh, which aren't dependent on which type of phone is, is sending the transmission or who is using that phone. You get a dry contact output, which is required by some amplifiers to mute music or to activate, instead of using Vox, which sometimes has a delay. This fourth item, 711 or 722 wideband is really important because uh, through the 8301 if you have phones that support HD voice or wideband or G722, you can get that audio quality right through to the amplifier which very often does support wideband but that wideband is blocked by the ATA which typically is uh, 711 only. The device is managed through a web interface and other management tools so it can be remotely managed. Everything is through a web interface so you don't have to be on site or you don't have to have access to the device to change uh, configuration. You also have very powerful notification and alerting or loud ringing capability inside uh, this unit, very much like the ceiling speaker, the other speakers as I'll, as I'll explain shortly. You can store wave files inside the device and they can be activated in different ways so you don't just have a paging gateway to uh, legacy or analog paging, you also have a very powerful device for uh, emergency notification or other types of alerts which are triggered by, it could be physical events or SIP events, and I'll explain a little more later in the presentation. Another powerful feature of the 8301 is it has a built-in scheduler, so it can also be in a school, it could be your bell scheduling system. In uh, retail, it could play a message, our store is closing in 15 minutes, please take your purchase to the counter. In, in healthcare, it could be notification for visiting hours. In manufacturing, it could be something else, safety notification or, or coffee breaks. 
that sort of thing. So based on NTP time, so synchronized with the IP clocks and, and other things in the environment. And lastly, it's multicast scalable, and, and you'll hear more about this in the ensuing slides, but this means that once you have one 8301 in the environment, that 8301 itself can multicast to the other, so you can scale this up just like you can with the speakers. There's actually two flavors of this IP paging adapter. The 8301 that I've mentioned is designed for one amplifier that has one zone behind it, and that means that all of the speakers behind that amplifier are wired together on one copper run, so we can't page them separately because they're all tied on the same uh, wire pair. So the 8301 is, is really designed for that case where you have one amplifier and one zone. Of course, if you have multiple amplifiers, again, it's scalable. And a similar product called the 8373 uh, is a little bit different in that it takes the output of the amplifier, whether that be 25, 70, or 100 volts, brings it back into the adapter, and then internal relays switch that out to up to three individual speaker zones. So you can have the, the zoning here based on the SIP extension that's called. You can have the zoning based on after a SIP call is made uh, the key presses that come from the phone to determine the zone or the zoning could be based on the multicast uh, address uh, that is received by the device. And again, scalable not just for multiple amplifiers but also if you have a single amplifier that has more than three zones behind it, then these devices can be multicast scaled so you can um, deal with scenarios where they have six zones, nine zones, twelve zones or more. So those are the paging adapters. Now these are the, the IP speakers and you see three form factors there. The 8180 on the right uh, we released in 2010. This has been a very popular product for us. It's uh, very compact. You can hold that in your hand. It's a, an 8 watt uh, powerful speaker. Uh, very similar in capability to the ceiling speaker in the middle. And on the left you have an outdoor rated horn speaker uh, which is louder than the rest of course. They all support wideband G722 HD voice, uh, just like the, the paging adapter, they support SIP, IP multicast, uh, uh, vendor specific interfaces, protocols. They're all administered through a web interface. If you poke the reset button after boot up from the device, it will speak its IP address to you. Uh, for example, one IP address is 192.168. And then you can go to any web browser and type that IP address into the address bar and you will get to the web interface and then through a password you can get to all of the configuration parameters for the device. Uh, usually you want to give it the IP address of the SIP server and you need to put in the credentials if it's going to have a SIP extension, the extension and the password. All PoE of course, uh, AF. Um, now they're all also ambient noise adaptive and they, they have this capability because they all contain an embedded uh, microphone. That microphone is listening to the environment and it will average over about 10 seconds uh, prior to an event whether it be a, a notification, a loud ring or a paging event. It will take that average of the ambient noise level and it will automatically adjust the, the volume of the speaker to compensate. This is um, really useful in environments where the where the noise level is changing all of the time. You don't have to have the speaker set for the maximum volume. If you had a workshop where you sometimes have a tool running and sometimes not, then your loud ringer, your notification, or your paging will automatically be at the right level. Uh, works as well, of course, in restaurants or classrooms and other situations where the noise level is fluctuating. We can use those microphones for uh, two-way conversation as well. Uh, for talkback uh, when it's operating in a, in a SIP mode. Just like the IP paging adapter, they all contain memory, one gig uh, memory for wave files. Uh, they come with several wave files of gongs, bells, chimes, barking dogs, and you can activate these in different ways with uh, a SIP invite message or a SIP ring or a physical uh, contact input to the device could initiate an event. You can also upload your own WAV file, so if a customer had a specific reason to have a voice file play uh, for an event, whether it be at a time of day or uh, based on uh, SIP activity or door opening or smoke detector, then you can have this WAV file play um, in response. And like the IP adapter, again, multicast scalable, and um, I think I'll show that on the next slide. No, nope, not the next slide. 
first we're going to talk about Wideband. Just in case uh, it's not clear what HD voice is or what Wideband is, looking at this uh, diagram, G711 is the standard telephony that uh, we're all used to, uh, constrained to 300 to 3400 hertz. Uh, that's a perfectly acceptable for voice. Uh, but in Western languages, a lot of the intelligibility is actually in the uh, the top octave in the G722 band, so that extension from 3400 hertz up to 6800 or 7000 hertz. This is where the hard consonants are to discern, particularly in a noisy environment or if somebody uh, doesn't have English as their native language, so you have to, the brain has to work a little harder to decipher what they're saying. The hard consonants there to discern between words like tear and bear and fair and hiss and this, that information is in that top band. So if you have an opportunity to page and take advantage of the wideband codec, then I encourage you to do so because you will get better intelligibility in your paging solution. That extension at the bottom end from 300 hertz to 100 hertz is the information that's missing that makes my voice sound different to you over the telephone or if I was standing uh, in front of you directly. That lower band doesn't contribute to intelligibility. It, it does give the voice a more natural sound. For music, you would probably want that. But for high intelligibility paging, many of the speakers will actually cut off that low end and focus on the, on the high end because we don't want to overpower an environment, to, especially if it's a reverberant environment. But we do want to get that high intelligibility from that 4 kilohertz octave. Um, could go into STIPA, it's a measurement of speech intelligibility for public address, but I'm not sure we have time for that today. This slide is a pretty good representation of, of what's happening when I talk about multicast scalability. In, in this situation, we're making a phone call, of course there would be a SIP server located somewhere either on that uh, local premise or in the cloud, uh, which is not shown. But a SIP call in, on this slide is going from that telephone to that horn speaker on the bottom and you would have the voice coming out of that horn speaker when it auto answers on that SIP extension and simultaneously that bottom horn speaker will generate a multicast over the network that would go to additional speakers that are subscribed to that multicast IP address. So you can have 10 speakers or a thousand speakers and hit them all as one SIP extension. You don't necessarily have to have each speaker registered with the SIP server. And if there's a cost, whether it be a monthly cost or a, a one-time license cost with SIP extensions, this is a way to dramatically reduce that, uh, that cost. Uh, this is just a pictorial on, uh, on what's happening with the microphone for ambient noise. If you look closely, it's not even the same room, but it's trying to show that uh, in a quiet room, any of the devices can be quiet, and if the room gets noisier, then, then any of the devices can compensate and get um, louder using that microphone. Notification and, uh, and alerting. Uh, there's so many possibilities here, it's really hard to, to capture them all graphically, but what you see here is a mix of endpoints. Uh, we have some of the speakers, we have the IP paging adapter at the bottom right, uh, we've got um, some buttons on the top right, uh, these are buttons that Elgo offers, but you can also have any type of uh, dry contact closure, normally open, normally closed in. Uh, again, it could be a door contact, it could be a, a switch uh, installed under a desk, it could be a smoke detector, it could be, could be anything you imagine. Any one of these devices can initiate the alert. Uh, it could be a SIP call from the phone to one of the devices, which will then play a wave file and multicast it out to any of the devices that you want based on a zone. Uh, you can have that button directly input to a speaker. So if you had a horn speaker, uh, for example, in a manufacturing facility, you could use that uh, that blue and yellow button tied into that horn speaker. And when you push the button, that horn speaker will play a wave file, maybe over that horn speaker or maybe over different uh, speakers in the environment or through the IP adapter legacy infrastructure that's already in place. You can also activate the strobe lights, so there's all sorts of ways uh, to put it together, and of course it could be time-based with the 8301, which is the purpose of the clock here. Um, in a school, you can have a, a button tied into a ceiling speaker in the classroom, and if the teacher presses the button, then that SIP speaker, that ceiling speaker, can actually make a call to the office, so you can have a two-way conversation between the classroom 
and the office. Uh, if it's a retail environment, that uh, that yellow button again, the blue and yellow device, uh, would work well on, on a on a pole in the store. And when you press the button, it may play an announcement over the store. Uh, customer requires assistance in gardening, for example. Lots of flexibility uh, here in, in how the devices interoperate. So the advantages of IP speakers uh, really over uh, legacy or analog uh, paging is the scalability from one to many. You don't have that common equipment. So you, in many cases, you only require one speaker on a site. And we have many customers that have hundreds or thousands of locations. So there's a lot of speakers, but there's only one in each site. Uh, so there's no requirement for any common equipment. As long as you have a POE network switch in that location, you can just plug a, a speaker directly into it. Easy to deploy across a network or a campus. Imagine an airport, they're building a new terminal, there's no copper infrastructure over to the other terminal. How are you going to get there? What's well, going to be across the network? Um, if you have a campus environment, we're dealing with a customer now that has 40-some buildings, each with multiple floors. They want to be able to page any building or any floor and any combination they want. In, in each building is an amplifier, but these can all be tied together through the network and very easy uh, with IP speakers to deploy them anywhere you, you need. Um, another example uh, recently was a school. They had a, a new classroom, a portable as we call them, on the schoolyard. Well, there was no way to get the existing paging there, so the easiest way to add paging into that classroom was through the network. Zoning capability uh, doesn't depend on how the system is wired. It can be changed at any time. It can be granular right down to individual speakers and rezoned in any way and you can have as many zones as you want so you can have um, if you have three speakers you could have uh, eight uh, well, more likely seven zone configurations if you need it this fourth button I've added a little image of a school there to remind me of this case I recently met with a school district and they informed me that every September when our school season starts they had 200 or 250 service calls to go out to various schools and change speaker volume on one of the speakers. Uh, the teacher in that classroom this year thinks that the speaker is too loud or another teacher thinks it's not loud enough or they change one, they exchange grades between two classrooms and now they need to get up in the ceiling and change the wire uh, so they can change the zones on those individual speakers for those classrooms. That's 200 or plus times ever that they had to send crews out to the schools and get up into the ceilings and make these changes. With IP speakers, you can do that. You don't even have to be on site. If you have access to the network remotely, you can you call in uh, and through the web interfaces, reconfigure that paging in any way you want. Changing the volume on a speaker or changing the zone of a speaker is, is very, very easy to do at any time. Of course, you have the mass notification alerting and the bell scheduling capability. The other difference with IP speakers is they're all basically home run to the network. So if you have a requirement for high reliability, each speaker is home run. So you're not going to lose a bank of speakers at a time and you have the opportunity to ping each speaker occasionally. And if you ever had a speaker go offline due to a cut cable or a bad port on a network switch or a, um, vandalism, then you can actually get a notification through some other tools we have uh, by email uh, that a speaker has um, is not performing. So you, you know at all times if you're using the paging system for emergency notification in a school, for example, uh, lockdowns, evacuation, reverse evacuation, or safety announcements, you know that that system is operational and ready. Wideband audio, of course, uh, which we spoke of, uh, they're all capable of, and they all have the microphone for responding to ambient noise. This slide really addresses you know, why customers have told us they've gone to IP paging. Um, sometimes it is more expensive than analog paging, although there's cases where it's not more expensive, sometimes less expensive. But these are the top four reasons uh, that we hear. Um, there's usually a critical safety or security function where they've had a bad history with their existing infrastructure. Uh, they're not sure if it's working, it's intermittent, the equipment can't be maintained anymore. Uh, but for whatever for whatever reason, they decided that the paging system has to be made reliable and it has to be uh, easily managed. The bottom left, common infrastructure. This is a very common one uh, where they don't want to run their paging on what is often described as unmanaged infrastructure. 
so they already have the phones, voice over IP phones on the network, the, the data of course on the network, security cameras are on the network, uh, so it makes sense to put paging on, on the network. So you only have one infrastructure in the building and, and all of your communication is, is running on top of that network. Very common these days to see new construction where network is absolutely everywhere and, and the idea of running separate wiring out for the paging just doesn't make sense because it's very easy to plug the speakers and devices into the nearest switch to uh, build out that paging solution. Top right, the uh, configuration, uh, of course, we spoke about that school uh, where you don't have to be on site necessarily, you don't have to get up into a ceiling to change wires, you don't need a 40-foot step ladder in an airport to get up to a speaker. Being able to reconfigure and, and change parameters remotely is, is of high value. Then bottom right, of course, this is open standard. So there's there's no server here. There's no um, computer running in the background that's unmanaged running Windows operating system, not to pick on Microsoft. Uh, it's all just in the endpoints, and they're using standard protocols such as SIP and IP multicast. Um, so there's no proprietary software anywhere, the servers, and the customers aren't tied into anything. They could easily change our IP speaker. Of course, we wouldn't give them the reason to, but you can put in a different IP speaker. And again, if the UC environment changes from one type or one brand, one vendor to something else, it's still going to work because just about every UC environment today supports SIP. And who is buying IP? These are, are you know, some of the customers that we've seen um, of course, we, we sell globally, uh, so this is based on our experiences in North America, uh, Europe, um, Asia Pacific. Uh, it's been a lot of school districts, particularly in here in North America. Uh, bell scheduling is, is um, you know, one of the drivers for it. Uh, often these schools have antiquated equipment that might be 20, 30, or 40 years old, or other options for bell scheduling involve proprietary software and ongoing monthly fees. The other thing with our devices is there's no ongoing charge. You buy the unit and, and that's it. So there's no ongoing expense to them. And this is a lot easier for a lot of schools to deploy. The emergency notification aspects, again, for lockdown and, and different types of safety events, medical emergencies in a school can be important. And the ability to reconfigure at any time. Hosted UC is, is a, a very active uh, space for us right now because a lot of that Old, the old phone systems are coming out and it's going either premise-based or cloud-based IP and you have to basically recreate everything that that customer had that was tied into the old phone system, whether it be analog or digital or something else. So they're very likely, if they had paging and need paging, they're very likely going to need that paging tied into their new UC environment. And if they had loud ringing, if they had intercoms or something else, then they need to tie that in. Uh, to the new infrastructure and, and this takes away the barrier of being able to sell new um, uh, UC infrastructure or system to a client when you can remove those barriers. Multiple locations, um, there's, there's many, many examples of this. Uh, we've, uh, we have some customers with thousands of locations. Uh, several of them are auto service related. Uh, several of them are restaurant chains, uh, fast service, quick service or otherwise. Retail chains of every type and variety. Uh, sometimes it's IP paging with speakers. Uh, often it's an IP paging adapter to tie in their existing system both uh, to uh, a central server somewhere for the entire corporation or uh, locally into um, uh, their network. Large facilities, of course, multiple amplifiers across airports, campuses, uh, tying all these together uh, with IP makes sense. Uh, the flexible zoning where you um, can have as many zones as you want makes sense in this market. Campus environment, of course, uh, having everything on the network is, is a lot easier than trenching and, and putting in copper wire and moving that wire around to change your zoning requirements. And in manufacturing, um, a lot of it's driven by safety notification. Uh, it could be medical related, it could be security related. Um, this is driving a lot of organizations lately to up their game when it, when it comes to being able to uh, alert their employees, uh, guests, visitors, clients of some type of an issue, whether related or, or whatever it happens to be. Just a quick overview 
um, of the intercoms that uh, Elgo brings to market. There's basically four. Um, uh, sometimes I title this slide with "Oh, great, more intercoms," because there's probably thousands of manufacturers of intercoms on the planet. What these have in common is they're they're all SIP uh, capable, so they can be tied into any UC environment. Um, this is really the intent of our products is that they tie into the UC environment instead of a point-to-point -point solution that you could buy retail where you have an intercom at a front door and a, and a master station sitting in one location in the building. All of these devices allow you to phones or groups of phones in the UC environment. You can get to uh, a SIP-based client on a, on a smart device. You have lots of flexibility to reach anyone whether they're on-premise or even, even somewhere else. Uh, two of them as you can see on the right, uh, have video capability. The 8201, this new product for us, uh, is a form factor that was very common. Uh, we manufactured the Nortel branded intercom from 1994 to 2012. This uses the same form factor, very successful uh, globally. It's an all-in-one, very compact. It can be uh, installed in um, a double gang electrical box. It can be flush mounted or surface mounted. There's an RJ45 jack on the back. This requires Cat5, Cat6 cable to the intercom location. Uh, this device, this is our most popular product at the moment. It's a two-part solution. So you have that same intercom, but the advantage of this product due to the two parts is you don't require Cat5, Cat6 cabling where the intercom is. It will run on single twisted pair, uh, 300, I think, to 400 meters. We, I think we specify 330 meters. Uh, now you can put that intercom, it can be an IP intercom, but it can be located in an elevator car, it can be located out a, at a gate. Uh, this is the only one of our SIP products that is not PoE, and the reason for that is we get an earth ground through the power supply, and that gives us lightning protection, so when that intercom is beyond the building perimeter. So you're not limited in this case to the, the 100 meter reach uh, to the closest network switch, so this product is, is very adapted to a retrofit application. You also get with this secure door control which is in the control unit not in the intercom unit and you do not have to provide access to the internet on the outside of your building that can be safely located somewhere in the building so you can tamper with the intercom but you're not going to get to the network and you're not going to be able to unlock that door. 8039 is a new product for us. This is really specific to mullion mounting where you have that two inch aluminum frame, glass and aluminum, which is uh, fairly common these days. The video in this case is 180 degree field of view de-warp, so that video is available on whichever device is answering the call through H.264 encoding. And you can also go into the web interface for the device and see what it's seeing at any time, uh, whether the device is active or not. So even if a customer has cameras on the outside of their building that are looking out at the, the area, what you get with the video here is a direct shot into the, the visitor's face, which uh, might not be visible to the other cameras in the environment. The keypad allows uh, employees to enter a code to unlock the door, and there's a lot of interesting features um, in this unit that make it quite flexible. This is our 8036 SIP multimedia intercom. This is a customizable touch display. When you get this product, it really doesn't do anything uh, through the web interface. You have to build your application, starting with a, a welcome screen. There is a proximity detector inside the device to detect somebody within a certain distance in front, so it can change screen based on that. Uh, and then you can determine how many icons you have uh, to touch. So touching an icon may initiate a SIP call, or touching an icon may go to another page, which may have more options. Or your first page may be language-based, so after you select your language, the presentation from there is, is in a different language on the screen, as well as you could also route that into different skills-based routing in your, in your call center, for example. This is really... Uh, a good product for unattended lobbies. That's the sweet spot for it. Uh, it can go outside like all of the other products. Uh, we don't like to see it in direct rain. Uh, won't damage the unit, but because it's a capacitive touch display, um, you can get false touches, although we haven't heard of an instance yet. You have one-way or two-way video. With this device, you can actually have uh, a video coming at you. We have a few customers that are, are using that for some very specific reasons. 
Again, with a customization of this, you can also put a keypad up here so you're looking at it. There's no switches or buttons or other touch points. That's because the keypad can be presented on the touch display, uh, much like a smartphone these days. And that is my presentation. So um, a little bit about Algo. If you've not heard of us before, we're Vancouver-based here in Canada. Our manufacturing is here. We ship globally from Vancouver. We've been around for 47, 48 years. We've shipped more than 4 million devices with the Algo brand, Nortel, Avaya, and there's other ODM partners as well. And we specialize in SIP and multicast endpoints for paging and notification, and of course the high intelligibility speakers, and, and you saw you had a preview of the intercoms. So I thank you for your time, and if there's any questions, I'd be happy to... Thanks, Paul. Um, there's a little questions box to the side, guys, so if you have any questions, you just chuck them in there. Um, and we will endeavour to answer them. Thank you for your time, Paul. It's um, worked out quite well with timing with the states.